In today's video, Sue and I take you through our leg session. Here's a quick edit. If that's all you were here for, make sure that you like and subscribe before leaving the video. If you wanna learn more about the session, let's hop in. So I had the order ring prior to this Garmin watch and my biggest qualm with it was that I had to get out my phone to be able to see uh, where my heart rate was and so on and so forth with the data. And so now with the Garmin, I have an accurate uh, feedback of where my timing for my workout is as well as an active look at my heart rate. So I enjoy it. I think it's a little bit more accurate as well. I thought the Aura Ring was fantastic for sleep and tracking the quality and duration of my sleep. But during training, the ring didn't feel all that great to be able to hold dumbbells or hold a barbell. So I generally would have to take it off for training. And so I'm not getting the steps, nor am I getting really that session tracked on the Aura. So switching over to the Garmin has been nice, but it also, I am someone who enjoys new tech toys. And so I've got to get out of the honeymoon phase with the watch to really give you an accurate feedback of what I think of the watch so far. Let's crack a lot. Hi, Hadi. <laughs> What's up, girl? I went with an oldie but a goodie. An oldie but a goodie. I couldn't find my blue one. I gotta be a champion today. You do. Like day. It's safety bar squats into the leg extension, stiff knee RDLs with the trap bar, line leg curl, 45 degree standing pad. That'll be easier for us to do together. Yeah, it's very straightforward. Lengthen quad, short quad, lengthen. Hamstring, shorten hamstring, shorten glute, shorten calf. Be my <laughs> One misconception that we commonly hear surrounding dieting and training is that you have to get weaker as your calories decrease, and that is not true. We are three months into our dieting phase, and I will say that a lot of my movements have either stayed the same or gotten stronger over the duration of the diet. When people reference getting weaker during a dieting phase, I find that this has more to do with the individuals who are getting single digit body fat levels, people who are getting ready for a bodybuilding competition, not necessarily the individual who is dieting from a lifestyle perspective to get in greater health. That individual probably is going to get stronger throughout the diet phase rather than getting weaker or even having the opportunity to lose muscle tissue. By continuing to train hard and maximizing protein consumption throughout your day, you have the greatest possibility of retaining the muscle tissue, if not gaining, throughout the dieting phase. Don't handcuff yourself through a dieting phase simply because you've been told that you should get weaker or lose muscle tissue when you lose body fat. 
allow for yourself to continue to train hard from session to session and maximize the recovery factors that you are aware of. You'll notice through this training session that we're taking every set to failure. And with those working sets, we have less working sets per exercise. What we know from research is that we can accomplish the same goal with less sets to failure that we would accomplish with more sets that are not to failure at, at sub-maximal loads. And so we are opting to have the less sets and taking each set to failure in this particular session. But the caveat is, is that you have to be able to get to failure in the exercise that you're performing, not just perceived failure, really pushing yourself. And we're gonna show you that through each and every exercise in this video. So I think you can do 10, but you gotta believe you gotta do 10. Well, can you be there just in case? Well, I sure can. But we're going for eight if I'm there. Eight? Oh yeah. I found the 10 for six. Yeah, you're gonna, yeah, we'll get there. I'll help you with the other two. I was kind of kidding for eight, but you did it. <laughs> oh, what a nice show you're kidding. Two reps here. You did it. And you know, last time I did safety bar, the most I could do was five reps to failure with just the 45. I know, look at you. You just did. Six with a basically a spotted two, so really it was solid. You got all six. You got all six by yourself. Uh, I helped with the last two, just getting you out of some sticking points. But you have the strength to do all eight of them, so that was awesome. The biggest part is being able to brace the core for all of them. That's what I was. The last few reps was just struggling with, like fully bracing it to go into it. I'm done with leg extensions. I'm probably yelling because I'm trying to talk over my headphones. <laughs> I may have been able to etch out another quarter rep. As we push deeper into the training session and we're accumulating this many sets to failure, there's going to be a cumulative fatigue that sets in. And so as I move into the RDLs, it's going to be something to be cognizant of that it may not be my PR for today for this particular rep range, but it's generally because of the fatigue that comes from these first two exercises. If I wasn't pushing to failure in both of these exercises, I may be able to hit that PR that I'm referencing. But in this setting, it's something to be smart about as you go into the rest of the training session.
会吃买卖几缸。Sitting on 25 racks. Just got started, no, we ain't done yet. But a new crib, that's a goddamn flex. Goddamn flex. Sign that check. Told them last year that I've been up next. Can't take calls when I send that text. From way downtown, but this shit's still wet. Splash. guys today we're <laughs> we're gonna do your check-ins okay um my mom and dad are not eating as much food i'm eating all the food <laughs> let's dig into it 
<laughs> week 11 is in the books and we are heading into the final week of this diet. During this past week, we celebrated the 4th of July. And oftentimes when individuals have a holiday come up during their diet phase, they get very anxious about how to approach nutrition with their family and friends when celebrating the holiday. What we recommend for clients to do during those holidays is to do what you desire to do, but understand the pros and cons of the decisions that you are making. So if you're going to indulge more, have more drinks, enjoy more food, understand that that may prolong the diet and the fat loss that you're desiring to have. If you're wanting to stay on plan, understand that you may have some uncomfortable conversations and be a little annoyed by your uncle trying to get you to have an extra drink when you already said you don't want one. It really can be that simple. You don't have to adjust your daily intake around the holiday to try and compensate for the higher calories that you're going to consume on that day. We decided to stay on our diet for the 4th of July as we had planned to have a full intuitive day that coming Sunday and getting to enjoy the day together while we didn't have work and we just got to be present with one another enjoying some of our favorite foods. When we're creating a caloric deficit, the weekly deficit average as well as the deficit over the month is the most important thing when it comes to fat loss. Last week, I shared with you that Sue and I both had a decrease in our overall calorie intake and we both saw decreases in the overall scale and Sue peaked into the 132 marker and is really seeing some awesome strides from a physique standpoint. My progress was most abundant through my photos and not so much from the scale. I only saw a point two pound change on the scale for the week, but it was probably the most progress that I've seen from week to week in the physique photos. As we head into the final week of this cut, we are going to increase the calorie deficit, not by decreasing our food intake, but by increasing our overall activity. Sue's steps are going to be on average above 11,000, and mine will be a little bit over 10,000 on a day-to-day -day basis. We're going to get this through playing basketball, riding bikes together, going on walks, doing things around the house, whether that be laundry or dishes or things of that nature. It doesn't have to be, I've got 11,000 steps on a treadmill today and I've just got to march my little heart away. Like we can do it through lifestyle things and make it much more enjoyable and practical to your day-to-day -day life. This may sound crazy to you, but this is the first week that I have been proud of my physique photos during this dieting phase. And I think that part of this comes from coaching as long as I have, as I am trying to pinpoint small details to everyone's physique to slightly improve. And so when I'm evaluating my own physique photos, I can be quite nitpicky and at times pretty negative. But this week was one where I had a smile on my face as I was taking these screenshots. And I wanna show you guys the comparison here to see the detail and changes that were able to happen over this past week. This was the week in which my midsection came to the freaking party. As we've talked about a number of times through the previous videos, my midsection has been lagging behind and I haven't understood exactly why. And they showed up and said, what is up my guy? We are here, let's party now. I saw fat loss through my midsection. My legs continue to tighten up. I see more detail and shape to my shoulders and to my arms. And when we flip to the back shot, this is where we start to see fat loss coming off of my lower back and more detail being shown through my lats and my upper back tissue as well. And so I am ecstatic, if you can't tell, with where I'm at at this point in the diet. And I'm really excited as we inch into this last week to see even greater progress as we inch forward. To lose this stubborn body fat, I did not do anything different within my protocols. I simply was consistent. I haven't made a whole lot of adjustments to my nutrition, as you guys have seen throughout this series. I haven't changed my activity a whole lot. It's improved or increased, but it hasn't gotten drastic at any point. And the consistency is what has allowed for me to lose the stubborn body fat. Staying consistent over the long haul and continuing to show up day after day is what has allowed for me to get to the goal that I set out to make, to have. But I only saw a 0.2 pound loss on the scale from last week to this week, but we see the physical changes that we have seen. And the big thing that I wanna drive home is that you're not always going to see the scale come down and physique photos improve. 
and more often you're going to see scale weight come down and maybe physique photos stay the same or physique photos improve and the scale weight maybe stays the same. Fat loss is not a one variable game. We see this week that my physique photos improved quite a bit, but the scale weight was pretty much the same. And if I was to dictate my success or failure off of one variable being the scale this past week, I would see this as a failure. But looking at it more all inclusively within my physique photos, within my training performance, within the quality of my sleep, I understand that I'm still making great progress in the fat loss and I'm not letting the scale dictate whether it's a failure or success. When reviewing Sue's photos for this week, there are three areas that I see the most progress for her. The first place being her upper abdomen and seeing more detail through her obliques. The second location was her glutes and hamstrings. She's continuing to lose body fat under that glute and seeing really great strides. And then the third location is going to be her back and more specifically her lower back is really starting to tighten up and seeing her waist really come in. You'll see through our physique photos that we have not lost muscle tissue throughout the duration of this diet. And that is because we have maintained our training intensity and pushed the envelope within weight used in many of our exercises throughout the entirety of the diet itself. The next time you guys see me at this desk, it will be the final episode of the Leaner Together series. I cannot believe it. I'm so happy with how things have gone. Let's go ahead and hop in to the recap for this past week. Last week, you talked about being in a place where you put yourself in this sickness based off of burnout, basically. Do you feel like you've done better coming into this week or how are you feeling going into the last week of this dieting phase? I don't know if I did better with it, but I was more aware of it throughout the week. And so the, the quantity of things on my to-do list was still very high. I didn't get sick, so I'll take that as a win, um, but I am still making a large priority on my rest and my recovery as a whole. I agree with that. And while we definitely are pushing the limit when it comes to everything that's on our plate, this is the most that you have shown up for yourself and really listened to your body. So even today of you couldn't go to yoga in the morning because you knew you had to sleep, you still made it a priority to get to yoga later in the day, show up for yourself, and really had that balance between resting and pushing yourself, which I think is so important because it's so easy, especially when the goal is fat loss to get into the more, more, more mentality. But as we've talked about, sleep is for the elite and really you need to train hard and recover harder, which I feel like you've really been prioritizing. Speaking of sleep, I know that it was a goal of yours for this past week. How do you feel like you did? Well, as you remind me, it is a goal every single week for myself and I did so much better. And when we look at consistency, it's not about being able to do something every single day. It's about doing something more often than you don't do it. And while I would love if every single night I could get over seven hours of sleep, Sometimes that's not how the cards fall. So I was able to really prioritize that and even sleep in some mornings when I knew I got to sleep later and I did need to have that sleep be a top notch thing. Even today, I slept in a little bit and I decided not to train because I really didn't have the capacity to give if I was gonna focus on my recovery and sleep. Next week's episode will be the finale of our first Leaner Together series. And we're going to take you guys all through our progress, did we meet our expectations, and what are our plans moving forward past the diet? So it's going to be very talk heavy. Get your pens and papers. We're gonna have a lot of fun and hang out together. But for now, I am behind on my steps and I've gotta get out of here to get caught up. And so I will see you guys next week. And if you're watching this on Thursday, our band tees launched yesterday. So there might still be some in stock. We'll have the link below, but go snag one if you can. We'll catch you in the next one, guys.